it going you guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is madison hill and yes it's time for another pop off with madison for today's pop off you guys i'm gonna be talking about mr sean john combs aka diddy because things with him are just continuing to downward spiral as of today we have a new report that is alleging that diddy has temporarily stepped down as chairman of his company revolt this is in addition to another new report about how macy's is trying to phase out his clothing line sean john from all of their stores and online Plus, you guys, all of this comes after two new lawsuits were filed against Diddy after the explosive one that was filed by his ex, Cassie. His former bodyguard has now spoken out and is seemingly confirming some of the accusations that Cassie made against Diddy. There's just a lot here that we need to break down, and I know we have briefly discussed the Cassie and Diddy situation during some happy hour hangs, but given the fact that we have gotten so many new updates in regard to this Diddy situation, I wanted to sit down and break everything down in a pop off. But first you guys, just two quick things before we move on. Number one, I wanna go ahead and say this is a trigger warning. We will be discussing abuse and assault during this pop off. So I just wanted to let you guys know that right off the top. And two, the other thing, because this is the first pop off of the week, you know I have to check in before we get started to see how the House of Hill is doing. So let me know how you are, what you've been up to, all of that good stuff down below. Me personally, you guys, today, I don't know what is going on with me, but literally at 5 a.m. my eyes shot open. I could not fall back asleep for the life of me. So I decided to, you know, actually just get up and be productive. Those of you who have insomnia will understand what I'm talking about. So I ended up getting up. I journaled, which I rarely do. I really need to start doing more of. I started doing some laundry. I worked out. I don't know what my problem was. I just could not freaking sleep today. Oh, there is nothing more frustrating, but enough about me because like I said, we have a lot to break down here, you guys. So you straight to the T people, go ahead and help out your fellow straight to the T people and put this time code down there in the comments. And now let's get to unwrapping these Diddy facts. Okay, so this, what I'm calling is the downfall of Diddy started when his ex Cassie filed a lawsuit in federal court against him for $30 million. Now in this lawsuit, you guys, Cassie basically accused Diddy of making her life a living hell ever since he came into it. She claims this pattern of abuse with Diddy started when she was just 19 years old when she signed to his record label back in 2005. A year later after signing with Diddy, so this was in 2006, that's when he decided he wanted to pursue her and maybe take their relationship to a more romantic level. In this lawsuit, you guys, Cassie made a range of allegations against Diddy. Everything from assault, battery, trafficking. Uh, she also claimed that Diddy controlled every aspect of her life from where she lived to her medical records. In this lawsuit, she also made accusations of the kind of intimidation tactics that Diddy would use to keep her under his thumb. And these intimidation tactics allegedly included dangling a friend over a 17th floor balcony, asking her to keep a weapon in her purse for him, and blowing up a man's car. Essentially, you guys get it. All of Cassie's claims were just absolutely horrific. And personally, I feel like what Cassie is claiming happened to her would have truly probably broken a lot of people. However, of course, as expected, whenever Cassie went public with this lawsuit, Diddy and his representation immediately immediately denied all of the allegations, but what I find convenient is that one day later, Diddy and Cassie settled this lawsuit. It's still mind blowing to me that just in one day, they reportedly amicably settled this lawsuit. Now we do not know how much they settled for. That amount is being kept under wraps. There are rumors online that it was upwards of $100 million, but they both posted on their social media accounts saying that they amicably settled with one another. Now before before we move on from talking about Cassie, I want to mention that just a couple days ago over the weekend, Diddy's former head of security did speak out and seemingly support Cassie because this man was named in her lawsuit. This man's name is Roger Bonds and in her lawsuit, Cassie claims that Diddy quote, stomped on her in the car after he accused her of talking to another music manager at an LA club. She says that this Roger Bond guy was present at the time of this incident and that he did try to intervene. That's why she named him in the lawsuit. He posted on his Instagram story, you guys, saying, quote, this is not meant to be threats or snitching or anything like that against Cassie or Diddy or anyone else. This is me telling my truth as I truly remember it for two reasons only. First, because I have four daughters. So on all dudes, my truth as I seen it, saw it, and was involved with 
it for years. He then followed that up with another post that he deleted and then reposted something else. But his original post, you guys, said, quote, I'm willing to tell my truth because for so many years I was quiet. Nothing matters now but family. When former employees started speaking out, that's definitely when my ears perk up. But continuing on, now after Cassie filed that lawsuit and her and Diddy settled, two additional women have come forward and filed two additional lawsuits in New York. Now, the reason why these women were able to file these lawsuits is thanks to a new Adult Survivors Act in New York, and it's, quote, a state law that allows such complaints to be filed within a one-year window, regardless of whether the statute of limitations have run out. The deadline to submit such lawsuits under the law expired on November 24th, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is because Diddy's lawyers and his reps are using this law to try to discredit these two other women who have come forward because they filed their lawsuits on November 23rd, the day before the deadline. Now, the first woman who filed the lawsuit against Diddy, her name is Joy Dickerson Neal, and she is alleging that Diddy, quote, drugged and assaulted her when she was a Syracuse University student back in 1991. In the lawsuit, she claims that Diddy took her to a restaurant, slipped something in her drink when she went to the restroom, they left, he reportedly pressured her to take a hit of a, you know what, and then he allegedly took her to a place where the incident occurred, and she claims that he also taped the incident and showed it to other people. Then after this woman's lawsuit, another woman came forward and filed her own lawsuit. She did not disclose her name, so she is going by Jane Doe. Jane Doe claims that Diddy and the R&B singer Aaron Hall took turns assaulting her in either 1990 or 1991. She also claims that Diddy threatened her about not telling anyone about it at the time. Basically, you get it. Three lawsuits and three lawsuits that are not saying great things about Diddy. Now, as I mentioned, just like Cassie's lawsuit, Diddy's attorneys have already released a statement denying these other allegations and already combating these other two lawsuits. His rep released a statement to TMZ saying, quote, the claims involving alleged misconduct against Mr. Combs from over 30 years ago and filed at the last minute are all completely denied and rejected by him. He recognizes this is a money grab. Because of Mr. Combs' fame and success, he is an easy target for accusers who will falsify the truth without conscience or consequence for financial benefit. The New York legislator surely did not intend or expect the Adult Survivors Act to be exploited for improper purposes. The public should be skeptical and not rush to accept these unsubstantiated allegations. Now, as far as fallout from these lawsuits, this is what I briefly touched on at the beginning of this video, and this is the fresh tea that came out today. One, TMZ broke the news that Diddy has now temporarily stepped down as chairman of his company, Revolt. Sources told TMZ that Diddy actually made this decision last week because he doesn't want the accusations he's facing to distract from Revolt's mission and success. This TMZ report goes on to claim that Revolt is celebrating its 10 year anniversary and doing well under its current leadership, which added T you guys. So the current CEO of Revolt, he is actually somebody who I personally briefly worked with at my old job whenever we got bought out by the new company. He was the head of the digital department of that new company. He was always very kind to me. We got along well when he came into town and had drinks with all of us. He has nothing obviously to do with the allegations against Diddy. He's just the CEO of his current company. But still, you guys, I'm just not over the fact that I was reading his name in this TMZ article. I was like, oh my gosh, it really is such a small world. But anyway, in addition to that, you guys, also like I briefly mentioned, Revolt isn't the only one of Diddy's companies that he's making moves with. There's also a new report from Radar Online that's claiming Macy's is trying to completely phase out Diddy's clothing line, Sean John. According to this report from Radar Online, it will no longer be available in the Macy's stores or online after this month. Now, these sources who spoke to Radar Online claim that the decision to, quote, phase out Diddy's line came prior to Cassie's lawsuit. They're saying that it's being phased out because it just isn't selling. But I think we can all admit the timing of this hard phase out this hard we're not gonna sell it past this month does seem a little suspicious at least it does to me that's just my own personal opinion and clearly I have a lot of thoughts about everything we discussed today and everything that's been happening and because this is not appropriate shambogging subject matter I'm gonna go ahead and pop a different kind of bubbly we're gonna hydrate send one another positive vibes and make this pop off official
Okay, so first of all, I feel like before I really get into this, I just want to say I really applaud anyone who speaks out after they have experienced any form of mistreatment. And excuse me for using watered down words. Obviously, I have to be careful of what I say on YouTube. Now, having said that, when it comes to Cassie's lawsuit, you guys, honestly, it turns my stomach. All of the allegations that she made against Diddy, even re-looking at them again today, I just, it really, Really, really makes me nauseous. And the fact that that man settled that lawsuit in one day tells me personally everything that I need to know. I know his lawyer said in a statement that Diddy settling this lawsuit is not an admission of guilt, but I feel like if you are settling a lawsuit amicably and privately within a day, there are some things in that lawsuit that you don't want explored further. Again, just my own personal opinion and what I believe is the public perception of Diddy amicably settling that lawsuit with Cassie very quickly. And while I know we don't know what number they actually settled on, I just hope that Cassie is happy. I don't think there was any number that would erase the trauma that she experienced. There's no number that's going to make what she experienced okay. But at the very least, I hope whatever the number was, was enough for her to feel like she can fully kind of close that chapter, find closure and move on and be comfortable with her family. Now, as far as the other two lawsuits are concerned, I know it's very easy for people to hear, oh, these things happened in 1990 and 1991. Why are you speaking out now? Why now, 30 years later, do you feel the courage to finally file a lawsuit? I know a lot of people are going to hear that and hear Diddy's reps combating these terms and already putting that narrative out there that it's a money grab and people are going to believe it. However, if you are someone who is quick to say that, say why after all these years are you coming forward now, I challenge you to try to think of it from another perspective. Imagine going up against somebody with this much power, this much money, and somebody who has already allegedly possibly threatened you before. You're not really going to feel empowered to speak out against this person. However, what might empower you is seeing another powerhouse female speak up, tell her truth, and file a lawsuit and say, I'm not backing down, I'm not scared anymore. I personally think that's what made these women feel comfortable with filing their lawsuits. Yes, did it come a day before that deadline for the law in New York? Yeah, it did. But Cassie's lawsuit was only a few days prior to that. So I do understand why Diddy's lawyer is trying to discredit these women because obviously it feeds Diddy's narrative. But I just just want to remind people there is a chance these women are just now coming forward because they saw Cassie come forward and they felt empowered to do so as well. And in addition to that, you guys, I also want to say that if Diddy decides to also amicably and privately settle these two additional lawsuits, that's going to tell me everything I need to know. Again, just my own personal opinion, but I do feel like if Diddy goes ahead and settles these lawsuits, it's going to be hard to come back from that in the court of public opinion. And I have to also say, I do think these lawsuits are having Diddy shake in his boots a little bit. He would not be stepping down as the chairman of Revolt temporarily right now if he did not feel like these allegations could affect his business. And I know also that report from Radar Online talking about his clothing line, Macy's is saying this has been a long time coming. But again, the timing of it all optically is allegedly and seemingly very suspicious. In my opinion, and y'all know I've been saying this for a while now. I do feel like a reckoning is coming when it comes to powerful men in the music industry. I don't know what it is. It started with the Scooter Braun situation, how that was starting to blow up and then everything got super hush hush and now all of this stuff with Diddy. I just feel like things are brewing when it comes to powerful men in music. I guess I just feel like Diddy might be the first one who's really catching the brunt of everything. And this is not the first time we've heard about Diddy's questionable behavior. People have been making comments about it for years, weird interview clips,
lips have resurfaced. Aubrey O'Day, I feel like, is finally vindicated. Aubrey O'Day, for the last at least year and a half, two years, has been trying to tell people how toxic it was working with Diddy, how toxic of a person he is, and everyone just wrote her off, which I feel like as a society, we have a habit of doing this. We have a habit of looking at a woman and judging the book by the cover. People see Aubrey O'Day and they're like, ugh, she's bitter, Danity Kane didn't work out. Oh my God, she dated DJ Pauly D for a reality show. She was stripping Donald Trump's son. It is very easy for people to label Aubrey O'Day as crazy and write her off and not listen to her. But she has been saying similar things about Diddy's behavior for a while now. I just feel like we should have listened to her a little bit harder. And again, like I said, I feel like we have a history of doing this because I think about this clip of Courtney Love when she's on the red carpet and people wrote her off because, you know, she's crazy. She was drinking. She was doing drugs. But her one advice to young women in Hollywood was to not go to Harvey's house alone. If we had listened and said, why is she telling people not to go to Harvey Weinstein's house alone? Again, I'm not saying more wouldn't have happened. I'm just saying maybe the reckoning for Harvey Weinstein would have happened a little bit earlier. R. Kelly. People in R. Kelly's circle and in the music industry used to make jokes about how he would go troll Chicago high schools for girls. And everyone laughed it off and everyone just kind of turned a blind eye. Look what ended up happening with R. Kelly. And I also would be remiss if I didn't point out that just like this now ex-head of security for Diddy is coming out and saying, you know what? I did witness some stuff and I don't feel good about it now that I'm a father of four daughters. R. Kelly similarly had people who allegedly helped him with his shenanigans who have now spoken out and now have guilt over things that they did. I just feel like there's this pattern of people of power losing their sense of reality and I just, I don't know, it's hard for me to understand because I feel like when I have power and money, all I'm gonna wanna do is help people so it's really hard for me to wrap my mind around how some people get power and money and all they do is hurt people. Like I just truly, you guys, cannot understand it. I don't know, I just feel like this whole thing is insane. I feel like it is nowhere near over. I feel like we're going to have to keep an eye on the Diddy situation for sure. We're gonna have to keep an eye on other men in music. I don't know, I just feel like there is more stuff that's going to come out, more stuff that's going to happen. And obviously when anything major does happen, I'll be sitting right here to fill you in on it. All right, you guys, that's all I have for you when it comes to the latest with Diddy. I wanna hear all of your thoughts, feels, and opinions. Please be respectful of one another down below. While you guys are at it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget that notification bell. For more content, make sure you follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. And of course, don't forget to keep coming back here to check out my YouTube shorts. If you guys wanna show me a little extra love or you just wanna make sure I see your comment, don't forget you can also hit that super thanks button down below. Also, don't forget to tune in to tomorrow's live happy hour hang at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. You guys can also check out all of my merch over at my merch store at houseofhell.com. And on that note, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.